this is the first game that we, well, this is the game that we took on after we had finished Spyro Year of the Dragon. And it was our first game on the PlayStation 2, and we have been in production for about 18 months on it. Somewhere, right? And uh, it's kind of hard to remember sometimes. It's been a very busy time. And when we started this game, we had just come, we felt like we knew the action platform category fairly well from our experiences on Spyro. We wanted to take it in a different direction. We wanted to uh, introduce elements from other genres to do something that uh, players hadn't seen before. Uh, we did not want to make a game about collecting 100 widgets or gems, as you might, or dragon eggs from Spyro. Uh, we wanted to inject a lot of uh, unique features that platform that we thought the audience, the the action character action audience, would appreciate and would be interested in because uh, they need they want something. We assume that that audience really is uh, always looking for kind of the new uh, a new direction. This game has a lot of different weapons in it. Ratchet can outfit himself with all sorts of uh, bomb gloves. He's got a bomb glove. He's got missile a missile launcher. He's got a blaster flamethrower, tons of things that you can use to wreak mass destruction and you can play the game and uh, you can often go into first person mode with some of these weapons even though you can't move around with them but um, it, we did borrow a lot from shooters. Uh, another genre we borrowed from was uh, RPGs. RPGs are very interesting in that uh, if, you're, if you're wandering around you're not wasting your time in an RPG, you're getting stronger. And very interesting that we set up a game with the exact same feeling to it because if you're wandering around killing enemies, it doesn't really matter whether or not you're achieving any of the larger goals. You're getting richer. And getting richer means you can buy better weapons and get stronger. So that's a real similarity. Also, it's really not practical to get all the weapons in the game. Much like an RPG then, your path through the game will be just a little bit different than anybody else's based on what you, you chose to buy. One of the hallmarks of action platformers is that your characters generally have a very wide moveset. And Ratchet can do a lot of things right off the bat. I mean, he's, he's got jumps, he can, he's got several different strikes with his wrench, which is his default weapon. These moves are enhanced by the huge number of gadgets that he gets in the game, some of which are the helipack, plus several other gadgets that Clank, the robot on Ratchet's back, turns into. So that's, we, we brought in our experience from action platformers to really give Ratchet a very wide moveset. And the other, the other genre that we borrowed heavily from is the adventure genre. In this game we have a very deep story, one that actually has a character arc, where both characters are developing throughout the game, um, and one with missions and quests that Ratchet goes on. So we've, by combining these various elements, we think we have a game that really does revolutionize the genre. Basically, how big is the game? Huge. Uh, we are getting up to the play times of the shorter RPGs here, like uh, Final Fantasy. Now. Well, Ratchet is a creature that we call a Lombax. He is. He lives on a planet on the fringes of a very different galaxy. This is a place where rocket ships and intelligent robots and high-tech gadgets are all the norm. And he dreams of leaving his planet, and he is a mechanic by trade but he can't seem to get any of his spaceship designs to work. Meanwhile, on the other side of the galaxy, there's an evil race called the Blarg, who have overpopulated their and overpolluted their planet. Their leader, a guy called Chairman Drek, has come up with a brilliant plan. He's decided to create a synthetic planet by taking pieces from other planets and squishing them together into one perfect planet. Now, this has the unfortunate consequence of destroying all the planets that he's stealing from, but they don't care because they're evil. Uh, to do this, he's creating these robot armies, and there are robot factories stationed throughout the galaxy. In one of these factories, a computer glitch occurs, and Clank, who is a small, very intelligent robot, pops out, uh, as opposed to the large, dumb robots and well-armed robots who tend to be manufactured in these factories. Clank figures out what's going on. He actually sees a part of Drek's plan, and he realizes, because he has a conscience, that something must be done. So Clank escapes the factory, tailed by the security forces by the, of the bad guy and gets shot down, as luck would have it, over Ratchet's planet. Now, Clank just happens to have a robotic ignition system, which is the missing piece for one of Ratchet's spaceships. And he strikes a deal with Ratchet. He says, I'll tell you what, if you help me get to uh, this, the next planet, I will uh, start your spaceship for you. And Ratchet, who wants to get the hell off his planet, says, great, okay, I'll drop you off. 
art programmers feel that we're probably using about 50% of the PlayStation 2's capabilities, and that as just like with the PlayStation 1, the further you get along in the in the hardware cycle, the more you discover about the more tricks you discover about how to really maximize the hardware's potential, especially when you're making a game that is PlayStation 2 specific, because we put all of our resources into an engine that's designed for the PlayStation 2. And you guys are using the vector units. I looked to Mark on this one because I extensively. am not extensively. Okay. Extensively. Uh, if you uh, if you do it correctly, you can be issuing up to four instructions every cycle on the. PlayStation 2, which is pretty amazing. So when I look at these games, what I see is that in terms of creating these million polygon handcrafted worlds uh, with really long views, there aren't very many out there, and there aren't very many out there on any hardware. It's not, I mean, with Xbox and GameCube released after PlayStation 2, and yet you can't find those games on, on those hardwares either. So I'm really not sure what's up in terms of the hardware performance. Overall, uh, all I know is that on, on PlayStation 2, there's Jack and Daxter and now Ratchet and Clank.